Is it some devil that crawls inside of you? Everybody, welcome back to the podcast. That's why I have a podcast, and uh, I didn't pursue music. That shitty singing voice. Hey guys, what's up? Oh my god, how's everyone doing? I'm in a okay mood. No complaints. Feeling good. Feeling okay. As far as October's go, let me close this fucking window. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. Feeling okay for an October. October is usually like peak sad time. Like, not like, it's not like the anniversary of anything sad, as far as I know. Uh, I'm sure I'm wrong about that, but it's uh, like the sad season. You know, that, do you guys know what that is? Seasonal affected vindidness disorder I didn't know what that was until I definitely had it and I went oh that's what that's what this is that's what the fuck they're talking about when they say seasonal affective vindidness disorder how do you even say is it effectiveness affectedness I gotta look it up for those of you who don't know I'm gonna give you a little uh um lesson on a seasonal affective disorder seasonal affective disorder is it even oh there's literally a national helpline oops maybe it's not that severe guys but seasonal affective disorder i'm sad seasonal affective disorder i gotta say it a couple times because uh coincidentally i am also sad and stupid so Sad is the type of depression that's related to changes in seasons. Sad, being the abbreviation, uh, begins and ends at about the same times every year. If you're like most people with sad, your symptoms start in the fall and continue into the winter months. Sapping your energy. Weird. I was literally using that term yesterday. Zapping. I was using zapping with a Z, like Zorro. Fucking not sapping, like a mess of syrup sapping your energy and making you feel moody less often you know what yeah and then kylie yesterday she thought something was wrong with me and i was like i don't know i'm just sore like i'm just tired like that that's literally the epitome of being a man there's something definitely wrong with us but we can only say oh i'm tired or oh i'm sore when when men are saying they're tired or uh, tired or sore and you're a little suspicious about it because you're like, why would they be tired or sore? What they really mean is, I'm fucking sad and I want to die. I think that's what it is. I, I was telling her that and I was like, how do I say I don't feel like walking all the way across the room to my bed because I have no spiritual energy, no spirit, no uh, motivation. I mean, I don't think anyone has spiritual energy. I think it mostly is a physical thing. But mentally if you if you if you call your mental state spirit and spiritual and kind of flub those words up i get it i get i get what you mean but whatever what have you um yeah so sad causes depression in the less often sad causes depression in the spring or early summer i don't really get that spring's my favorite spring is like the the tail end of depression that's like when the i have a lot of anxiety but i'm not sad about it so i can like you know get through it pretty well um yeah as far as that goes i'm just feeling like today i feel great today i feel fine today i'm like super like you know had some coffee uh i had in and out for dinner last night and there's nothing like sleeping on a belly full of fucking flying dutchman a couple of burger patties Oof. woke up feeling great like, I, I, I felt great, but I also took an um, afternoon nap, too. I woke up at, like, 10, 11, and then immediately went back to sleep at, like, noon. It was great. It was I highly recommend being a lazy piece of shit. Um, it's not even that I don't have energy right now. Yesterday, I certainly didn't, but it just... 
didn't want to do anything. Fucking laid back down. And I don't have anything to do because I'm an unemployed loser. My job right now is the podcast, is selling mugs to you guys, is uh, maybe working on a Patreon. I don't know. I don't even know how to do it. I don't know what it would be like. I don't know what I would offer. What would I sell you guys? Just extra episodes of me saying cunt. Um, yeah. Treatment for SAD may include light therapy, medications, and psychotherapy. Dude, I'm not going to go to therapy for this. I'm fine. Don't brush off that yearly feeling is simply a case of the winter blues like I just did. Or a seasonal funk that you have to tough out on your own. That's literally all I do every year. Two years ago, it was horrible. 2018, oh my God. I wanted to drive off of a cliff. I had no idea where it came from. I was just like, oh, looks like uh, death is the only option. Take steps to keep your mood and motivation steady throughout the year. Uh, that's usually what I do. Honestly, I think that's one of the biggest problems, um, at least people I've known personally uh, have, is I, I, see, I see them not doing things to keep themselves motivated. And what what helps me often, what helps me a lot of the time is finding people and things that excite me and inspire me. Like I've been watching this show on Netflix lately, uh, meat eater. And not just because like, I want to shit on people who don't eat meat just cause like it, it's a, I had heard about it. This hunter who's been on a bunch of podcasts I listened to and he himself, I think has a podcast. Uh, he goes out and, hunts uh animals wild game and stuff and then shows you like a recipe for it at the end and like cooks it and they they show you how he cooks it and so everything he's out killing he does eat it's not just wasted or trophy hunted which is you know seems kind of pointless to me like i, I if i was hunting i would definitely want to eat the thing and it's not violent it's not upsetting like the animal deaths aren't some huge like cornerstone of the show like it's done in such a nice respectful way and there's so much reverence for first of all humanely killing the animal and then honoring it and just the having the uh toughness to pack out the animal that you essentially gut open in the middle of wherever the bum fuck you killed it it's really impressive um this man's a tougher, greater man than I. Um, he's had quite a few more trips around the sun than me, but it's just so calming and so beautiful to like see someone out in nature and they're being quiet. And sometimes it takes days to find something they're hunting or, you know, and they're camping. Like, I just want to be out connected with some sort of nature again. I, I literally look out my window and I see billboards and fucking chain restaurants and malls and shit like that it's like right out my window it's really kind of gross i mean i've never really lived somewhere that wasn't in the middle of nowhere or that i let me rephrase that i fucked that up i've never really lived somewhere that was surrounded by a lot of wilderness or kind of isolated at least not too isolated i've lived out on like ranches before but they're pretty close to town there's neighbors it's it's not like you could just walk outdoors and you'd be outdoors isolated. It really takes a lot. And I think that um, some of the best people I know as far as mental health is concerned, like they go out into the wilderness. They have these excursions. They have a connectedness that I don't like a connection that uh, I'm missing a lot of the time. So I think uh, that's just kind of one of the things that's been inspiring me, motivating me lately, is uh, that idea. I actually went on this really cool nature walk, nature walk, like a walk out, like on a little path, like a loop in like a m less populated area here in uh, San Diego County and uh, with Kylie and had this just... I don't know what even started the thought or the question, but I was just like, I don't even know what the question was. But essentially, we started getting down to talking about what we'd do, where we'd move, and like what would be like dream scenario, like best case scenario, what kind of like 
environment we'd like to live in. And we both had a came in agreeance that like a you know like a like a cabin by the lake sort of deal. You know what I mean? It's definitely a dream. If I had one of those, what do they call them? Vision boards? Is that what they're called? Right? Vision boards. That doesn't sound right. But you know what I mean? Where you like put like everything you want up on like a piece piece of like plaster or like art. I don't know. I've never I never did a single project in school. I was a horrible student. I'm still a horrible student, even in jujitsu. It's a fucking nightmare. Fucking just feel like I'm in school again. I can totally feel like the exact same I totally see it. I totally see the parallels of like, oh, that's why I was a bad student because I literally cannot fucking pay attention and I don't care. Like I I do care, but like my brain says it's impossible to care any more than you care about losing focus. Um, yeah, it just cabin in the woods sort of deal just came to agree about like the living situation. I don't know. It just sounds great. Just sounds good. Started getting into details about like what we'd have on the property. I'd love like a nice property, something isolated. I don't care if it's next to a fucking pond, dude. Just something in the middle of fucking nowhere. Just get, just put some distance between me and like literally, this is what the fucking second time I've lived right next to a highway or a freeway. I don't mind it. I have a great view and there's a lot of pretty things around here and it's really cool. I do like a bit of the uh, industrial like modernism of it. it. Gives like a very Blade Runner-y kind of vibe. So there's a strange kind of romanticism with that. I do appreciate that. But like I said, like that's one of the things uh, that's been inspiring me and motivating me and I think that a uh, losing focus of those goals and those ideas and even things in the culture of so to speak uh can really can really affect your mood can really affect your confidence and just your mentality your overall state of mind is this mic on i keep there's an on off switch on this mic it's like a cool portable mic i think my brother yeah my brother got this for me right I don't know. My brother's done so much for the podcast. I don't even think he listens to it, but bless his heart. He's helped it from the very beginning. So shout out to Justin and Remy, Remy, the dog. God, I miss them so much. I'm actually sneaking off to the central coast here in a couple, a couple days. Going to go visit surprise visit. No one there is going to listen to this by then. So I'm really not worried about it. Or at least like the people I'm visiting, you know, it's all it's all middle aged old people, all Gen Xers and shit, Gen Xers and boomers, like my grandma. Can you imagine my grandma listening to this podcast? I, I would never get a Christmas card again. You said what, Dallas? No, we don't say those words. How can you even think that? I don't know. My, hard to say yeah one thing that also helps strangely enough or at least a little bit like just uh, it kind of rounds out the edges of help is a uh, retail therapy i fucking love buying shit i don't know why but for the most part it gives me a little dose of it like little endorphin a little serotonin a little ah yes something new I just bought new trucks for my skateboard. I switched over from Independence to a uh, Destructo trucks. We'll see how these things see how these things work. I'm really I really like the uh, name and logo and everything. I actually used to skate Destructo trucks when I was a kid, like when I was uh, fucking just starting out. I remember because Bam Margera and uh, what was it Ragdoll and Ben Gilly and. There's like all kinds of cool dudes on Destructo trucks when I was a kid and they had pro models and I love Destructo. Like my other friends would ride like Crux and Thunders and Indies. Indies came later. That was like once you were like a real core skateboarder when you're really like married to the whole culture. You kind of ride Indies. It's pretty typical. You know, as weird, really weird as those fucking guys who, uh, and girls, I guess there's a lot of girl skateboarders now, but. I don't really pay attention to what they ride because I am sexist. Um, 
is a uh oh got a phone got a little ding here um what was i saying destructo trucks oh those ace trucks people ride this brand ace they're like super scrawny they look like they're really like stripped down kind of low profile but i don't know it's a very odd thing it's like i don't know how to what to compare it to but it's like if someone got a <laughs> to me it's like if someone dr drives like a nissan truck instead of a ford or a toyota or a chevy it's like really you got a fucking nissan that's so weird destructo is kind of like that too this is definitely like not like it's definitely like a niche brand it's like a atypical kind of brand I, there's no team riders that i'm aware of right now last time they had team riders was like bastion salabanzi and ardo sorry and that was like after the prime of their career so who knows what's going on if you go on to their website if you're in skateboarding culture and shit like that, uh, you go to the team section and it's just the logo and caution tape and it says under under construction. It's kind of a kind of a laugh. So I may have just gotten um, like a really bad truck brand, but I needed new trucks. So hopefully that that made me feel good buying that, buying those. You know, I got a Thompson for Sheriff poster in the mail. It's on the way gonna hang that up since i have a total of one thing in this whole house hung up that is mine it's the beautiful single line portrait of remy done by ali wallace alexandra wallace photography on a, you know <sighs> instagram I don't, is that even that's not even her handle is it just tagged me in a photo couldn't even say the right name i know she's listening to the little ally a L L I Alley. That's how. She doesn't have like a single. Enter the winding standard. I don't even know. Hmm. Anyways, listen. Not important. Um, I mean, she's important, but the details. It's, it's, I'm not gonna get sidetracked. I'm gonna get. I'm not gonna get lost in the weeds here. <sighs> yeah. So. That's where I'm at. Retail therapy has been helping, staying motivated, interested in things. I started reading the Stephen King book uh, in 2000, March 23rd, 2017. Not even March 23rd, 2017. Sometime in March, I started reading this book at Walgreens, back when I worked at Walgreens. For those of you who know me, you remember how fucking long ago that was. I predated the podcast by a good two and a half years, probably. Um, fucking, yeah, uh, I started reading the, what, what is it called? Revival. It's right here. It's right here. I, I, I started reading it sometime in March and, uh, I just bought it on the 20. I finally would, uh, quit wasting time at work reading it and then just bought the book. Cause it was on the shelf at work, like for sale, but no one would buy it and I'd always hide it. Like behind the other like Daniel Steele books and all these other fucking books that no one was gonna buy. Um, and then it uh it finally yeah it just got a hold of me. I was like God, I need this book. I can't let anyone else buy it. I might as well buy it, and I did. And the receipt is actually what I've been using for the bookmark. Look, Walgreen bargain books, five dollars ninety seven cents. This is a great book. I'm enjoying the shit out of the book. Um. That's why it's taken me three or four years to read it now. So, whoops. <laughs> um, I'm about 130 pages in. That's how much of the, that's how long it takes me to read books. I have books that I, from high school that I have not finished that like I just started and just never finished, but I still have them and I'll still like open them once in a while. I have another book right fucking next to me. I guarantee I started reading this either the last year of high school or what is it the year after i'm 25 years old that's how long i've had this fucking book i still haven't finished it but i'm still like slowly picking away at it every couple of weeks or months or something i'll read a couple of pages there's so many books there's so many movies too like i love movies that's a big problem is i won't even uh, excuse me uh, i won't even read the books i'll watch movies of it i'll be like well, definitely 
can see the movie quicker. We've got to do that. Got to get that out of the way. But um, what a trip, man. <sighs> Sober October has been a long one. I'll tell you that. It, what is it? October 21st when I'm recording this? The time now is 4.59 p.m. Wow, is it really that late? Ugh. <laughs> Life goes by quickly when you take uh, a couple naps a day, I tell you what. Sober October, man. I have, I think this has been maybe the first half, like the first 15 days of the month during Sober Octobers is always very, very difficult. It is so hard to not want to drink or smoke weed. Those things feel so good. At first, the hard part is not drinking because you go out with friends, they're drinking. Um, you go out to dinner and you have drinks. You go, you come home after like a, I, I, in this case, not a long day of work. I have no job, but you just need a drink or maybe you want to go sit by the pool and have a fucking beer. None of that. None of that is allowed. You And then weed is like, hmm, you want, maybe you want to feel a little creative. You want to be relaxed. You want to be outside of your own, you know, head. Just kind of want to get, give all your anxieties a rest and kind of weeds just like literally a a flavor enhancer to life kind of stimulates creativity and inward thinking and i can tell there's definitely a more um la- more latitude in my thinking strangely enough but you usually when when sober october happens i have this incredible like surge in energy and I'm like super angry and grumpy and kind of withdrawally, but not this time. I think the whole seasonal affective disorder is kind of sapping my energy and not really feeling too vivacious. Is this thing not even recording? Okay, it is. Holy shit. I thought it wasn't recording. Ah, that, that, that happens once or twice an episode now it's happened it's definitely happened in the earlier episodes uh my audible no not audible just audacity the software I, I use sometimes to record the podcast would just stop recording and then i just lose like five minutes of conversation and it's always a really really good good five minutes you know it's always like wish i could have fucking had that but the universe said no Sober October. I, dude, I'm. I decided that I'm just doing 30 days of sober October, so that way I can actually have a fun Halloween. I mean, dude. First of all, it's 2020. Second of all, Halloween, big fucking deal. Best holiday. Only gets better the older you get because there's so many stages of Halloween you can enjoy. When you're a little kid, you get all kinds of candy. You get to go trick-or-treating, get attention. When you're like a preteen, you get to go, you know, out with your friends, no parents, go trick-or-treating. That's a big deal. Kind of get, you know, a little independent and have some fun. Maybe get a little mischief, you know, kick a black cat, fucking uh, smash some pumpkins or you know, TP someone's house, maybe something like that. Teenager starts to get real fucking independent, kind of doing, doing things, you know, can't really get away with too much trick-or-treating maybe some of the parents turn you away at the house but you know you know that like fucking tiana or whatever the fuck your neighbor's name is is like you know dressing a little slutty this year she's getting a little she's developing she's hitting puberty you're hitting puberty you go i know what those are i don't know what to do with them but i know what they are and i know i want to walk over there around the block with her and then maybe uh you hang out on Halloween with your friends at night and uh, you go around the block to maybe see uh, what, what kind of houses you can get some candy at and then your friend stays behind with your ex-girlfriend get, uh, gives her hickeys on her titties and then you fucking come back had no idea what happened you know true story um, it it's crazy man like and then you be, it, it, it kind of slows down kind of older you get a little teenager maybe you get get to go to a party 
maybe a couple of years it gets a little stale. You're like, fuck, dude, I can't do trick or treating anymore. But I want to do trick or treating because I'm a candy fiend. I'm a young person, you know. Maybe you, maybe you're a nerd. Maybe you're a dork who doesn't have any friends. Maybe you have like really bad social anxiety. And even if your friends do exist, you're going out to parties and doing things with them sounds like a nightmare. Maybe you're a little bit of an introvert like me. Maybe your grandfather died and then you had to spend the next Halloween with your grandma because you didn't want to have her be alone. So you guys pass out candy together. Maybe you watch The Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, Just burped up sadness right there. That was all what that was. You know, it's it's exciting. Halloween. And then you get to become an adult, like an adult adult, like drinking age adult. And then the parties get way wilder. There's maybe there's a stripper there. Maybe there's um, like a costume contest. Maybe uh, everyone is getting drunk and dressing slutty and they're all over 18. So it's not weird, you know. And like I said, maybe there's a stripper there. Who knows? There's all kinds of fucking fun things. But this year is 2020. And you can't just go to parties. Because someone's going to show up with their bad stuffy nose and then ruin it for everyone. You know? I mean, you can. You could go to a party. You could be around people. Like, it's really your risk or your gamble. I mean, how many people have you been around and not gotten it? You just kind of have a risk versus reward type of thing. And maybe this is the one day of the year that, uh... Fucking, you can you can let loose. It's also Halloween's on a Saturday this year. This is the first time in my adult life that Halloween has been on a fucking weekend, and it happened in 2020. This shithole year with the whole election bullshit going on, with the whole cancel culture cavalcade going on. That means I I know I did this, said this last year. I know last year's Halloween special episode, I said that what I wanted was to have a uh, fucking um, a cultural appropriation party where everyone just dresses in costumes and like appropriate, like, like a cultural insensitivity, you know, just to like make fun of the whole thing, just to have like a fucking, I just saw a truck go by with a tray, like a big storage container on the back that said China shipping and all my fucking all the only thing that happened the only thing the first thing that popped into my head was just like Wuhan coronavirus COVID driving right by and then that's the next thing that's the other thing fucking the whole pandemic everyone's been trapped inside now people people actually this is the weird thing is like people are getting mad at you for doing things with other people this late into like the pandemic like it's a pandemic um i get it people died i know people who died it's not awesome i also know people who die from cancer i'm not gonna stop making like cancer jokes You know, I know people who die in car accidents. I'm still going to fucking drive a car. Like, I know that you can spread the flu if you go somewhere. You should stay home if you're sick. I get it. Stay home if you're sick. That's what what you do. How How are you possibly telling people what to do or getting mad at them? Like, just admit it. You're jealous and you're a scaredy cat because you can't go out. Because you're afraid of someone getting mad at you on the internet, too. We get it. You're a bitch. You're a fucking pussy, too. Or, you know, admittedly, some people do have valid excuses. Some people are immunocompromised. I'm not, I'm not here to ignore your plight. But I'm also not here to parade it, either. If I can go out to a party, I will. If I, you know, can be hang out with friends and not get sick that's what i'll do if i can get covid and then shake it off like the fucking flu that it is to people my age i'm hopefully gonna do it right no this isn't to say that i'm gonna go straight to the first party i can find and go make out with strangers and share drinks not that i don't do that every weekend anyways but Not during Sober October. No drinks. (sighs) Halloween. Halloween's just coming right at us on a Saturday. It's like a trap waiting to happen. First of all, 
It's the last weekend before the election. Before the big election. Everyone thinks you know who's going to win. But everyone thinks you know who's going to lose. But everyone thinks you should vote for you know who. And you're bad if you vote for you know who. And um, I know that I have a wide variety of listeners across the political party spectrum. So I really love imagining who you guys think of when I say these things. Um, or maybe someone's going to say, you're wasting your vote voting third party because apparently if you don't vote third party, you'd vote for their party. <laughs> so it's a waste. <laughs> um, I did that. I was a total fucking hypocrite. I remember after the 2016 ele- election, after um, what's his name won, the, the guy fucking... You see him every day. You see her, hear his name every day. What's his name? Donnie. The Don. Donald Trump. <laughs> After he won. Um, I like got mad at one of my friends for uh, voting third party. Because I didn't want Trump to win back then. Not that I want him to win now. But I just am embarrassed that I voted for Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> Even my dad was like, ugh, yuck. My dad gave me money. Like it, it, one, one time after the... Uh, election and I told him I voted for Hillary and he took the money back. <laughs> He's like, give me that fucking 50 back. <laughs> like that's how disappointed he was. <laughs> I love that there's like still real men out there like that. It's like doesn't give a fuck, you know, just like, ew, you did what? No, no. Give me the 50 back. Just like a classic, like a TV dad. Like those are real dads. And then just the whole, all of all of what fucking all of television and movies pretend they don't exist now or they're all like (laughs) just some fucking ridiculous version of it go watch last man standing fuck off um anyways (sighs) yeah so so halloween is on a saturday in 2020 on the weekend it wants us to celebrate so bad it's a trap it's gonna know it knows that you're gonna be doing something maybe you shouldn't on a mischievous day that you are not only like you're not required, but it is expected of you to wear masks. It's okay. You're going to go out. You're going to get a little drunk. You're going to wear a mask. You're going to bump into someone with the, the, the COVID, the the Rona, and they're going to get you sick and you're going to, start feeling symptoms the day after the election when the results are being read and you're gonna not you're not gonna know if you're sick because you know who won you're not gonna be or if you you don't know if you're gonna be sick because you know who lost and you're not gonna fucking know what to do and you're just trying to survive in this world and you go I haven't been feeling too good these past couple of days. I don't know if it's because you know who won or I got COVID, but I feel horrible. And you're not going to fucking know. And then you're going to go get the test. You're going to go get tested. And they're going to say, it's going to take about two or three days <laughs> for us to read the results. To give Give them back to you. <laughs> and it's going to be even worse. Than the night of the election when you're waiting for them to read those results. It's the same thing. It's either you have COVID or you don't. It's either that guy wins or he doesn't. Or, or woman. I know there's a few women going, but like I said, we know that the third parties are just going to come in third place. We get it. <laughs> um, and you're going to have to sit there and you the anticipation of oh my god is it a positive result or is it a negative result it's such a flip of the fucking coin you're not gonna know you're not gonna know and then finally the result gets read and a huge wave of relief comes over your body because either you don't have corona either they won and it's fine or you do have 
corona and you get to die instead of living to see another day under that administration. <laughs> oh, what a lovely, lovely Saturday Halloween's going to be. It's my friend's birthday. Going to fucking hang out, get drunk, socially distance. <laughs> <laughs> gonna um, <laughs> gonna have my first drink in a month gonna have a so that's why it's only 30 days that's why I'm just doing the 30 days of sobriety if anyone has mushrooms or an edible or something I'm taking it I don't give a shit it is my Halloween and I'm here to share it with others it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I don't know if... Who knows if we ever get to see another Halloween the same again. First of all, I hope this is the last time we ever go through a pandemic as a country, as a culture, as uh, the whole world in general. This is awful. This is horrible. There's been so much government overreach. People have been never been more divided. All I have to say is no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, whether it's this side over here, this side over there, or somewhere in the middle, no matter what happens, we deserve it. No matter what happens, no matter what the outcome is, whether it's something I want to happen or not want to happen, we have it coming. I can't stand, like when I see people out here driving, I just don't like any of them. Your car's dumb, your fucking haircut's dumb, the music you're listening to's stupid, I don't fucking like the way you merge, I don't care what your bumper sticker says, it's not for me. I don't like you, I hope November's horrible for you. And I hope you don't agree with me. <laughs> like, this is a horrible feeling to have. But I've have been having it for, like, the entirety of the... Pan maybe not the entirety of the pandemic, because the beginning was a fucking dream. It was amazing. You got to avoid everyone. Everything was clean. You just get, got to stay home, get drunk all day. Watched fuck. Oh, at least I did. It was great. I feel sorry for those of you who didn't have any... Any sort of uh, fucking break from work. I just got to stay home by myself. Just, ugh. I lived at home with mom. Didn't have to pay rent. Oh, just got fucking extra unemployment money. You know, I know that's coming out of our fucking end, off our fucking top. The government's just in more debt. I heard, I heard something like twenty-two percent of all debt that the United States has ever been in happened this year, like in all 300 something or almost 300 years, this country's existed. First of all, who do we owe this money to? Is it China? Um, why are they releasing the Wuhan virus if they want us to pay the money back? Not a smart idea. That's like a loan shark breaking your hand for not paying the money back, but you make money using your hand. You know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck are you doing? You realize, like, you're never getting that, you're never seeing that money now, right? Okay. That's fine. Seriously, who do we, who, who, who do we owe this money to? I'm too stupid to know. Everyone keeps talking about debt, but I look at my bank account and it's a positive amount right now. What's up with that? That money's not going anywhere. I mean, it's definitely going somewhere. Probably going to buy some more skateboard parts, some dumb shit for my seasonal effectiveness disorder. You know? But, uh, I'm not paying it back to anyone, right? Maybe pay, spend some money on some bills, pay rent with it. But then, I'm not giving it to, what, China? God? Satan? I mean, I might, might be giving money to Satan, like in, more, not, not in like a, a, a real way, more in like an ideological way. Maybe like whoever I'm giving it to is like literally the devil. <laughs> but again, like literally in like a 2020 way. 
not not in like the way literally used to mean isn't that weird literally doesn't mean what it meant it meant literally and now it means not literally is there any other words like that that meant the thing but don't mean it i know phrases i know there's phrases like couldn't care less or i could care less like that one's kind of backwards right people say one or the other but they mean the other What's that about? <laughs> What's the deal with couldn't care less? What's the deal with literally? Fucking boomer ass joke. Not even a joke, just a thought I had. See, I'm still stupid. That's why I'm not paying. That's why I have no idea who we fucking owe this debt to. What is that about? What in the fucking goddamn shit is that about? Who? Who do we owe the money to? I'm not paying it. I, hopefully I don't own it to Trump. I thought he was a billionaire. I thought he was he, he was covered. Also, is does he get to use, like, his money? Like, does he get to, like, when he stays places, like, is he like, don't worry, I got this. I'm fucking loaded. <laughs> like, what's that about? What's his net worth? I don't, I'm not, I don't mean to sit here and talk about that guy, because literally every fucking day, everywhere you look, people are talking about it. That That's one thing that sucks. That's the old, like... One of the reasons why I really have no investment in him being elected is like, I want everyone to stop talking about him. But I know as soon as someone else is in the office, everyone's going to be talking about them instead. And it's just going to be so annoying. Do you remember when when, when Obama was, was the president? And it was just like every fucking day. Thanks, Obama. It's the same fucking thing. Just the people over there are saying it instead of the people over here and vice versa. It's literally everyone just saying, oh, thanks, Trump. Racist. Thanks, Obama. Terrorist. It's the same fucking thing. It's just, it's just, it's just switching colors. Go boop, 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 boop. And then for some reason, I don't get like what i want in life what what is that what is up with that like oh my 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 taxes keep going up what is going on like anyways donald trump net worth that's like the 50th thing and his 2019 billionaires ranking forbes estimated trump's net worth at 3.1 billion dollars 715th in the world 259th in the u.s as of march 5th 2019 Uh, who is the youngest billionaire? Um, Kylie Jenner. Is she even really a billionaire? How did she get a billion dollars? I want to know. Does she like have like a... What does net worth mean? Does that mean they like straight up have fucking that much money in the bank account? It's not what it means, right? It's definitely not what they mean. It's like their gross income. There's no way. There's no actual fucking way. Yes, Donald Trump is still a billionaire. That makes his $750 tax payment even dot, 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 and it just cuts off. It's probably, they're probably saying cool, even cooler. <laughs> and then it says the world's broke. Bill- I'm not here to d- fucking talk about him. Sorry. I just wanted to know the net worth. Sorry, I get sidetracked. See what I mean? <sighs> Jesus. What else are we talking about today? Um... The Dodgers are going to the World Series again. Um, I read a tweet that predicted that the Dodgers will lose the series four games to two. Um, This tweet came out in, I don't know, 2017? Let me see, where is it? Dodgers lose in... Great, now i got to find it. Pretend it actually existed. What if it didn't exist? What if I was full of shit? Oh, Tampa Tampa Bay Rays win the 2020 World Series over LA Dodgers four games to two. Hashtag predictions. Hashtag baseball. Hashtag future. By Ramon underscore alone. So Ramon alone. Um, November 5th, 2016. And it says, no point in watching. It's already been written. Now, 
I guarantee there's somewhere someone out there that has the exact fucking opposite predicted. We're just not seeing their tweet right now. It's just whoever saw that or found that was definitely like a Rays fan or hates the Dodgers. Maybe they're a Giants fan. Also, I'm pretty sure for those of you who are Giants fans out there, thank you for listening. Um, and also Dodgers fans, thank you for listening. Uh, my brother-in-law was a Dodger fan till the day he died. He actually, his ashes reside in a Dodger blue urn box, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Dodgers all the way, you know, good for him. <sighs> um, so I'll be rooting for them in the world series. Um, I really have no dog in the race, so to speak. Not really, uh, either one of the teams I root for, but I've been to a lot of Dodger games, been to two or three, actually. It's been nice. I've enjoyed them. I enjoy a good Dodger dog. Um, but for my Giants fans, that makes the 21st World Series appearance for the Dodgers. Giants, you're one behind now. Guess what? Sucks to suck. And if they win, holy shit. Here, let's look this up. I just want to know. I just want to know. And then we'll cool it. And then we'll have a... Uh, uh, Kylie, come on in. Los Angeles Dodgers. Let's see. They were actually... They used to be called the Trolley Dodgers. 1911 and 1912. Back when they were in Brooklyn. That's so weird. They went from Grays, Atlantics, back to Grays, to Bridegrooms, to Grooms, back to Bridegrooms, to Superbas to trolley dodgers to dodgers to robins to dodgers again how annoying most of those names were fucking ridiculous so let's see achievements achievements how many world series have they won do you guys know i don't know i'm just gonna read actual fucking trivia okay that's it. I gotta fucking have like a keyword search. This this is why it was better when I had the, the arms. I have to hold the microphone with my knees now. Dodgers World Series appearances. Okay. They have twenty four National League pennants spanning from eighteen eighty no nine eighteen ninety to twenty twenty. That's a fucking long time. Can you even believe that? That's not even last century. That's the century before last century. These fucking guys were winning pennants, the National League pennants. They have six World Series titles. 55, 59, 63, 65, 81, 88. That's crazy. Now, let's look at Giants. Eight. Oh yeah, you beat a, you beat you beat the Dodgers. Wow, they won three in the last ten years too. Good for them. I really don't give a shit about the Dodgers, but or uh, Giants rather. I mean either team, honestly. But what's who, who won the World Series the year I was born? Nineteen ninety five World Series champions. The Atlanta Braves. Holy shit. They just lost the pennant. They just lost the play in the play playoffs. Um, wow. Should that be my team? Ooh, over the Cleveland Indians? Ooh, this is awkward. My brother was scouted for the Cleveland Indians. <sighs> Damn. It's kind of a boring. Oh, oh, well, is that even the same? Year? Okay, no, I'm thinking of football. Football is the one where the season starts in the year before, and then for some reason it ends the next year. That always confuses me because it's like, does that mean the 2020 Super Bowl already happened? Because I really don't know. Or is that, or are those your 2019 champions? 2020 Super Bowl. No, Chiefs won 2020 Super Bowl. That's the one. That was number 44. 54? Is it 44 or 54? It has to be 54, right? They've been having Super Bowls since I was like a kid. <laughs> um, all right, guys. All right, I'll stop fucking blabbing your ear off. Um, we're going to come back. We're going to have Kylie on the podcast to talk about the uh, 
rest of the month how her sober October's going because she is actually doing it with me and um, more to be uh, to be seen to be heard be right back bye hey bad etiquette listener if you're enjoying the show and would like to support the podcast you can donate to our paypal at paypal.me slash bad dows And I think that should work. Um, I've never stopped it and then continued recording in the same thing. Yeah, see, this is a totally different one. Shit. Sorry. I don't know if this is going to work. Okay. But Do you, you want to fidget with it a little bit? No. I was already fidgeting with it, oh. and I thought I figured it out. But, but you did this before. It, uh, I just paused it, and you just came oh, in the room. okay. You were gone, so I had to, like, shut the thing off. Gotcha. So I didn't want to drain the already pussy battery life this thing has. Understood. Yeah. Anyways, welcome back to the podcast, Kylie. Thank you. Folks, you guys know the lovely, uh, indomitable Kylie Montgomery. That's me. Oh, that's right. Am I coming through okay over there? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear. I hear myself in this ear and mm-hmm. then I hear you in this ear. Weird. I really don't know what the... Uh, Actually, yeah, that totally makes sense because when I if I can't plug both headphones in, mm-hmm. even with the splitter, because mm-hmm. I get one and not the other, mm-hmm. and it's really annoying. Yeah. But, yeah. Anyways, welcome back to the podcast. How is your sober October going? <laughs> I mean, I guess so far so good. This is actually my my first official sober October. I've never participated with you before. No, but after last year's, we spent like a long time sober. Yeah, because I, I wasn't doing so well in the drinking department. I th- if anything, I'd say you were overachieving I mean, in the yeah. drinking yeah, department. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But. Not only that, I drank for one day uh-huh. after Sober October, and I threw up like a teenager. Yeah. Like the first time they drink and throw up. Yeah. I it did. was ridiculous. That was not- that wasn't the best night ever. That, that was not. That was horrible, man. I had a fucking hangover like you would not believe. Yep. I got you Taco Bell the next morning, I think. Was it? Yeah. Wow. Taco Bell sounds pretty good. Do you want to get Taco Bell after this? Ooh. little Taco Bell treat for being such a sober queens. A little Taco queens. Bell treat. I've had Taco Bell once, guys, since I moved here. I yeah. don't even. I don't even know like what to do we're health queens now we don't drink we cook a lot of our own meals we don't do drugs yeah i've never done drugs so that's (laughs) stayed i if anything i've stayed consistent that was an easy turn for you yeah yeah but uh yeah sober october so far so sober i mean how are you feeling here's the thing is i don't know if i feel much of a difference kind of like i thought i was going to like it's not a stark difference no i mean maybe it is and i'm just like excited to drink again (laughs) yeah so i'm not uh i'm not thinking too heavily about how much better i might feel do you feel like a little like clear minded little like your head like little thoughts are clear i mean it is i'll say it's super nice to wake up in the morning and know that I'm going to feel fine and that it's not going to be like a struggle to get my day. I mean, it is regardless, (laughs) but without that, like the haziness of like day after drinking, Mm -hmm. that's been really nice. I probably have like, uh, been a little more productive. That's good. Due to the fact that I don't, or I haven't been drinking, so I don't Mm -hmm. wake up with the grossness yeah you don't have to that's the worst part yeah you don't have to spend a portion of your day just recovering yeah exactly be a part of the day yeah i think that's been really nice um do you sleep better oh yeah i think so yeah Yeah, because i i cannot sleep when i drink i always wake up in the middle of the night i get three or four hours of sleep when i drink then wake up can't sleep and then fall back asleep many hours later and i've broken up sleep it's horrible yeah 
Agreed. I big bags under my eyes. I get dark circles. It's horrible. And my face gets real puffy. Yeah. And I think it just makes like everything in my body that is injured or has sustained injury makes it like all the more sensitive. Mm-hmm. Like I can feel everything a lot more. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that I've definitely gotten to a place where I don't want to drink as much as I used to, even when Sober October is over, because mm-hmm. I really do despise the morning after feeling Oh yeah, and the sleepless night, um, or in my case, the vomiting, because I... You're a puker. I'm a, I'm a, pu- well, I'm an over drinker. You're an over drinker. Which turns me into a puker. That, that, I understand. Um, but. You just got, you got to roll the way I do, baby. Just like take a, a couple drinks and then you can just drink way longer. I, I drink so fast with whatever I have, whatever beverage also, I Also, you know what a pr- I think, uh, if I could be so critical is, uh. Sure. <laughs> you'll take shots, like. <laughs> Uh, a lot (laughs) yeah (laughs) i don't i don't i don't do shots Mm -hmm. if i can help i do well also i feel like if i'm if i'm just doing shots and then like have uh like a hard kombucha or something (laughs) like that i'm like saving calories possibly because i'm not drinking like multiple mixed drinks i don't know there's no logic behind it. I just start I drinking. Also, once I start, I'll just drink whatever comes my way. That's true. And also, I they always say, what, don't drink your calories? Yeah. Which is so fucking true. And if uh, your body just turns all that alcohol into sugar yeah, anyway. So it's like you're just having sugar, sugar, sugar drinks. And it's fucking your liver up, apparently. And Apparently. well, I'm I'm no doctor. Um, I would I'm th- these are just uh, statements I'm regurgitating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, like just the f- being able to physically be there, mm-hmm. just to be present, have like a clear mind. I like I I'm not losing my train of thought. That could yeah, be from not smoking I, weed too. I did too. say that um, as well. That I I feel I feel like my <laughs> sorry. She's playing footsies with me over here, and then she it like, was really distracting. Really distracting, like she's never seen a fucking ogre foot before. <laughs> a ham hock. A ham hock. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I I do think that my memory's been a lot better. Um, short term mostly, mm-hmm. but yeah, I think. I definitely do feel better. I, I take it back. It's not, it's probably not a slight difference. It's just. Well, yeah. I mean, that's why I'm asking is because I don't think people really acknowledge how they're feeling day to day unless they're constantly taking a self inventory. So I, that's why I like having these conversations and why I really like the 30 day challenges as it is. Yeah. Because it does kind of narrow your focus into like a results based experiment. Mm -hmm. So that's why I uh, am excited to have you on the podcast and to talk about someone else about Sober October. Thanks. Because I've been going through this shit alone for what, this third, fourth year in a row now? Yeah, and most of the time it's not fun because I still would make you go out with me to like bars and stuff and then you'd just be sitting there like a loser. Mm -hmm. But I will say that non-alcoholic beer has gotten so much better. I yeah. just shared a thing from last year that said non-alcoholic that. beer, don't do it. Yeah. But the Heineken 0.0, not they're bad. not fucking around. That beer is good. I'll drink a 0.0 anytime. It, it truly just tastes like, like a Heineken. Heineken. I don't, great. I'm not, yeah. I don't see the difference. I mean, I don't drink Heineken that much. I do want to have a taste. Maybe we'll film a video or something. We'll do a taste, a blind taste test of the Heineken 0.0 and the regular Heineken. Oh yeah, that would be fun. That'd we be should fun. do that. We should do that. Okay. Um, yeah, that's actually, that's helped a few times. Like the first time we hung out with like our friends mm-hmm. and they were drinking and we weren't having that uh, non-alcoholic beer actually did help for whatever reason. It's like festive. It seems stupid, but yeah, it helped. And I think, I don't know. That's the only thing that I really like. I guess miss is just 
if I'm going out to dinner with a friend or having friends over or having like a nice dinner where I want a glass of wine. Yeah. The ritual is really important. Yeah. But I, I'd love to, um, keep it to a minimum after October and, and limit the, Mm -hmm. how often I do it. Yeah. I mean, I got, we'll see how it goes. I got to tell you after each sober October, as the years progress, it's gotten way easier and also, it's the, uh, I mean the after I was mm-hmm. going to say the, the first half of sober Octobers are always hard, but I was going to say not dr- continuing to not drink afterwards. So easy. And, yeah. uh, one of the biggest motivating factors for me is saving money Oh yeah, because it is so easy to, I, there's plenty of nights that I would have spent a hundred dollars on alcohol mm-hmm. at the shamrock or something or at a bar somewhere. Yeah. Like even the last time we went the night before uh, October 1st, we went to a, a bar and it was like just taking cash out of the ATM, the ATM charges, tipping, buying a round of drinks. Like it was a lot. Yeah. It's and, a lot of money, you know, and you don't like after you're buying drinks and drinking. You don't even pay attention to how much you're spending. Exactly. Like your body is now numb to the fact that the <laughs> yeah. money's being traded for it. Yeah. And then you go, oh my God, how many dinners could that have been? How yeah. many gallons of gas could that have been? How many like maybe I needed to get some interview clothes to get a job and now I have less money oh, for well. it. Maybe I wanted something for the house that was going to improve it and now I don't have it Mm -hmm. like you start i mean that's the way i think i i don't you (laughs) must be fucking nice i'm over here going Uh, just seeing each dollar sign as something that could have been i think because i I, think you've always thought of like you just think about those things more than i do i just i mean that well i I mean it it was because i think it was because it was instilled so mm -hmm. early in me that like Dallas, we do not have any money. We can't buy you that. So Mm -hmm. I go, fuck. So I'd see every time, I'd kind of like calculate every time like my parents would spend money on something. And I went, damn, if only uh, we didn't have to eat this week, that could have been a new pair of crew pants or that could have been a new uh, skateboard or maybe I could have gone to skate camp with my friends, Mm -hmm. but we don't have that money. Mm -hmm. And now, and, and my parents were big alcoholics and yeah. smokers uh and if you think about it what between five and ten dollars a day for a pack of cigarettes a day what's, what's say ten, that's three hundred dollars a month mm-hmm. essentially then what three that's so that's three almost four grand a year in cigarettes yeah that's a lot there and was that, always extra change for my dad to get cigarettes and alcohol really? <laughs> when i was a kid yeah because we were also like extremely poor. I remember mm-hmm. him like, he probably doesn't want me to say this too bad. <laughs> he, I always, I remember him like scrounging change to buy like a pack of cigarettes or like yeah. a fucking pack of Coors mm-hmm. Light. Coors Excuse Light. Excuse me. Coors oh. Light. Yes. Light beer. Better or, for or a huge ass bottle of Smirnoff vodka. Oh, wow. And that's not even like great vodka. That's no, just it's like, not. that's like top of the bottom level yeah. vodka. Yeah. But maybe that's why I don't think about it because it was like, it didn't really matter how, if I was eating ramen every (laughs) night, there's still like, that was just where the money went. I don't know. Also, I think this, it's been, the sober October has been weird because I made the decision. Like I just went into it really quickly because I didn't even know for sure if I wanted to do it. And then I just kind of drank myself to the brink of death the night before and thought mm-hmm. you know what now seems like the perfect time yeah. to take a break what do you take know? a step back yeah. and also i've been trying to better myself and work out and so i thought it would be um a good opportunity to work out eat better and not have the element of drinking because i know that does um prohibit me from getting where I am with my body Mm -hmm. and I don't even think about it either I'm like I'm barely eating how come I'm not losing any weight and it's like because you're making up for the calories and what you're drinking idiot so much yeah and not only that it causes so much like bloat anyways 
it's it does something different to your body than just regular like soda would or food does. Yeah, but I mean, I don't even, I don't drink soda that often. I know, but I do. Okay. And I did. <laughs> I also assume like those, the hard kombucha because it's kind of my go-to drink, especially yeah. like the Boochcraft. Yeah. I don't know. I've never looked, but I guarantee it has so much sugar in it. Uh, Yeah, I think I have looked. And it probably, I mean, obviously it just turns to sugar That's as well. added sugar too. Yeah, I know. So it, it all just becomes I sugar. I should probably try something new, but I can't really do beer and it's high in calories. Yeah. Um, yeah. I used to just do like a nice vodka soda, but vodka makes me crazy crazy <laughs> vodka is crazy i could drink vodka and fight someone me too it's not hard no it's not and it's so funny because i uh i feel like we've possibly had this conversation on the podcast before too bad i feel like people always say that about tequila like even my dad says that he's like oh no like you'll have your time with tequila but even i i've never ever felt like tequila makes me happy mm-hmm. i feel like it it tec- doesn't hurt me as much the yeah, next morning. I, I've read that real tequila is technically the only alcohol that's not a depressant. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know that. Like I agave. Know. What like do you mean? The, the, real tequila. The, the something. Uh, there's something they make tequila with, uh-huh. and it. Um, the way they distill it, it's not a depressant the way other alcohols are. I don't know. But when you say real tequila, that's not the stuff I'm drinking, probably. Oh, I have no idea. I don't. Well, I mean, if, if it's made from like the the plant. Uh-huh. Like that only grows in Mexico or something, then it is real tequila. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Either way. I think the tequila we are drinking, because we have a standard of tequila, is real tequila. Look at us. Yeah, but I don't know. Sober October. I'm glad that I've done it. It's been... It has been easier than I thought it was going to be. It's easy to do it with someone. It's yeah. hard when I'm out and I'm getting like side eye comments of like oh he's not drinking yeah no i kind of feel bad for all those times i made you do it alone (laughs) oh you didn't make me do it alone i really chose to yeah it's more that you put me through like the social (laughs) stigma of being sober around people who weren't yeah to be fair this is probably like an easier time to do it because there's still a pandemic so it's not like we're going to bars yeah we're not going to as many like social things as we did the past few years yeah um because To me, I think what made me not want to do it in the past was October is such a social month. Ari Shafir calls it the best month for drinking. Yeah, it is. (laughs) Because there's Halloween parties. It's Mm -hmm. just like right before the holidays. I don't know. It's just like there's it's the perfect time to drink. And why would I want to miss out on that opportunity? Fucking A. I mean... there is an argument that why would you want to miss experiencing it sober? Yeah, I know. But have you even felt like you've now. been in the Halloween spirit this month? Um. Cause. No. Okay. Not really. I mean, the past few days, I think it's been like a little cooler here. A little gloomy. Yeah, and I can tell that it it's getting cooler. What? Cooler. Cooler. It's yes. getting darker earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, even like when I was driving home today, yeah. I, I felt like it was more fall vibes. Yeah, I agree. But for the most part, uh, I don't know. It's just been such a weird year. I, I don't e- I don't really feel like doing something super Halloweeny. Like I have no interest in really uh, putting the effort into like a costume this year. It's really draining. Yeah. I don't have the energy or like the interest in me either. Unless I had like a really cool party. You're not supposed to go to parties. <laughs> but unless I had that, I don't see the point in like coming up with a costume. A and I don't one. have kids, so I'm not trying to impress anyone. <laughs> you don't want to impress me? No. You don't want to dress like a slutty elf or something? Sure, I can do that, but Thanks. I can do that any day. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I got my costume right here. <laughs> it's actually, I have it on right yeah, now. Yeah, she is folks, a slutty elf, actually. Let's not lie. Um, yeah, but I don't know. How about you? Um, I keep feeling like the beginnings of, like the foundations of a 
Halloween spirit or like a mm-hmm. seasonal vibe. Say, yeah, it's just like the very, like, like we're almost, almost there. there. <laughs> and then the worst part is, I feel like this kind of happens the older you get, is that the whole month of October doesn't necessarily have that feel to it. Mm-hmm. And then at it's the right very the end, end yeah. you get it and you're like, ah, oh, that's what I was waiting for. And then November 1st hits and you're like, oh. I hate, oh, you get the Halloween hangover and you're like, wait, it was all a dream. It, it yeah. was, what happened? No, I love the costumes. Why couldn't have that have been? I, I think there should be um, an October 1st Halloween, an October uh, 15th Halloween, yeah. and an October 31st Halloween. There should be three days of Halloween and eat, there should be three different costumes, three different celebrations. Yeah. I think it should be like, I don't know like the way people celebrate Hanukkah where it's mm-hmm. just like eight days and you have different kinds of presents you open mm-hmm. and different like th- like have some sort of string I'm gonna maybe that's what we'll do well, next year why- we're gonna have the Halloween weekend or something like every weekend is a different just, Halloween yeah try celebration harder to party. make it all yeah. month long yeah be- well I haven't felt like Going to a pumpkin patch. I don't even really feel We'd like carving. We went to one and well, it was yeah. dis- But I didn't really want to. It was, yeah, I don't, it wasn't even dis- I, It wasn't bad. It was, it was really so fucking hot. hot. It was like 90 degrees in the yeah. daytime. I'm not anti-mask, no but going somewhere and having to wear a mask. Outside is ridiculous. It's not ridiculous because. Okay, say what you were going to say. I'm sorry. But it's just not. It doesn't put me in the mood. Yeah, it definitely, because it's definitely, I'm not wearing a fucking Halloween mask. I'm wearing <laughs> this knit mask or something that's yeah, and sweaty it just, and, and it, Yeah, acne. and in the middle of the day when it's so hot and you're supposed to pretend like it's fall. And and I'm also wondering, like, is is this the same feeling? I mean, do other people have the same feeling that don't live in California where it's hot most of October? Like, I wonder if they get into the spirit earlier because of the it's weather cooling change down yeah i don't know about the weather anywhere else cuz it's been unseason i i want to say it's been unseasonally warm but that's unseasonably warm excuse me <laughs> um but it to me what it seems like everything is just a month behind uh, yeah, la- I mean, to- last Cause, October, cause I felt like it was way cooler. Yeah, yeah. But, but I feel like every every couple, like, years, and I think th- this is a wild theory, so please don't uh-huh. put any, like, stock into it. But mm-hmm. I think because of the um, leap year and constant time changes, that everything is kind of slowly, like, Pushed. Like it's not actually October. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like October's actually. Gonna I think be that more all the time. Like, what I, I if that... what if we just made a, an oopsie at yeah, one well, point? Well, yeah, yeah. Like, who's actually taking like making a uh, count for this? And God. Then, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you, God. Um, and so I, I just think that uh, it, it's just not as severe of a like a war, like a hot October as I'm thinking it is Mm -hmm. well to me i see everyone saying like welcome to california where it's hot all october even though it's fall or something like that Mm -hmm. like i feel like i keep seeing things like that and so it's been also we're living my whole life it's either been hot or cold in october Mm -hmm. it happens every year i don't know where we are i mean (laughs) <laughs> or in our bedroom in beautiful San Diego County, California. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know how I, why I said that. I don't know what the weather's been like in um, on the Central Coast the past few weeks, or or not the past few weeks, I, but maybe I, the past week or so. Uh, oh, okay. So it's been a touch colder than it has here. Okay, well that's what I figure because also it's. Usually warmer Hot. down here. Yeah, which yeah. I didn't think of because I, I'd really, at some point, love to live in a place where there's seasons again. Because it I just, especially it. the older I get, because you lose touch of just like the excitement of the holidays and all of that. Yeah. And I think, at least having the distinction with the seasons would bring a little bit of that feeling back. Yeah, I assume. I, I think it, it I would. I might be bitterly disappointed, but mm. I'm willing to I, I'm willing risk to give it, it a try. Yeah, yeah. same. Because. 
it's a little depressing living in California and having to pretend. And it's like, Ooh, oh, it's, it's scarf weather, colder. but a scarf would give me heat stroke. <laughs> yeah, like even this week it was, or it's supposed to be getting cooler here. Mm -hmm. But even, I thought I was not even supposed to get uh, past the, in the 60s today. Mm -hmm. And when I was out, it was like 81, I think. Ugh, you mean 70s? No, 60s. I thought oh. it was supposed, I mean, I could be lying. Not lying, but I could be. I know what you mean. Misunder. Misinterpreting. Mis I might have looked at the wrong day. Is what I'm saying. I, I mean, shit. I have no idea what to expect from weather because it rained so much earlier in the year. Remember the beginning of the pandemic when it was raining so much? It was it so easy. It rained for like a week. The beginning. Yeah, that felt so like gross. <laughs> Because not only was there like a pandemic all of a sudden, but also it was raining and it felt like the world was for sure ending. It felt like winter vacation. Mm. Okay. Felt like sad to me. Seasonal affective disorder? Yeah. Weird. <laughs> I actually spent about 30 minutes talking about that before. Did you, you really? Yeah. Because I was feeling it so bad. Oh. Today? I, I noticed it now? was like every, uh, not today actually, interestingly enough. Um, but yesterday you had asked me what was wrong and I was like, I'm sore. That's what. Like when you were grumpy. But, and I was like, hmm. It's like, mm, I'm sore, but also I feel the exact same about jumping out of this window. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> like I, I was definitely, uh, I can tell when it hits. It's the weather. Yeah. And then my brain. So that that's kind of how I've uh, compartmentalized it and uh -huh. how I've coped really well with it too. Um, if I actually you know why you're ways. feeling that way, it makes it so much. Yeah, because I'm just like, oh, it's the same thing. Like time of the year to me w when I get my period, at mm -hmm. least like sometimes it's hard and I I can't tell telling myself like, oh, you're just feeling this way because you're on your period doesn't make me feel better. But sometimes it does. Yeah. It's like. Don't even worry about it. Just cry. Just be angry because yeah. it's just your period. You can't help all your hormones are all weird right now. And then it, in a week you'll feel fine or back to normal at least. Yeah. And I mean, as soon as the temperature dropped here, like my mood went like, ugh. and I even thought to myself, um, cause I was like, oh, I know there's like those sympathetic pregnancy things that men <laughs> get mm -hmm. type of thing. And I was like, I wonder how much of living in a household with two ladies gives me like, like a sympathetic IMS, you know? Irritable yeah. man syndrome. I don't know. But we, um, you and I cycle differently because yeah. I <laughs> get anxious and really bad anxiety. That's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depression, if you will, in the summer, for whatever reason, the summertime gives me the feeling of impending doom. Yeah. And in the fall slash winter time, when it starts to get darker earlier and it starts to get cooler i feel this like childlike giddiness and excitement that's cool and i just like i feel like i'm constantly like reliving or thinking of like really lovely childhood memories mm. so i feel the opposite oh well, that's interesting and i know that we've discussed that yeah before yeah. with each other because uh it sucks. <laughs> it does. It sucks that you feel sad during this time where it's like where I feel the most like cozy and comfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, I will say that um, even leading up to this, mm -hmm. even because it just happened like a few days ago. Yeah. Where I was like, hmm, this is suspicious. We're into October and I feel fine mm -hmm. type of thing. And then it hit me and I realized it's every October. Mm -hmm. And it... uh maybe it's and then i even thought to myself i wonder if it's from being sober not drinking because mm. i was trying to recall being a child and having any sort of seasonal effect of sort of and it was never uh something i could recall yeah but also like this time of the year when you're a kid's a lot more exciting it's so different so maybe i'm just depressed because i'm an adult exactly <laughs> probably so the I holidays mean, to start and my body goes it's yeah. boring year old. <laughs> <laughs> I could be wrong, but I would assume that not drinking helps you 
not feel so depressed about? Yes, I would too. But and I'm not, maybe not really willing to compromise not being sober. Mm-hmm. That would be a, yeah, sober. that would be a weird reason too. Yeah, I mean, I would like to at some point make an experiment out of it, but because I love experiments, but yeah, I'm not sure. That's weird, but but yeah, like you said, I love the summer. The summer makes me think of awesome, beautiful, perfect sunny days in Napomo with no end in sight. Yeah, and it just makes me think of like I can do whatever I want, and mm-hmm. that's on me. And this day is limitless fun. I mean, this I get the charm. Awesome, it is charming. I will say that uh, without question this past year even though we've been in a pandemic i've well even last year Mm pre-pandemic like i've definitely just decided that writing out my emotions no matter what the season is and just letting them exist letting them feel really be in the season and in the moment Mm -hmm. is so important like i can't um i was reading this book last night and there was a great quote and it said it was like you should never wish away time or something like that and it would be it was talking about like kids wanting it to be halloween already or you know wishing it was summer so they didn't have to be yeah. in school and i was like that that's really odd like a very strange coincidence because i've been thinking the same thing to myself mm-hmm. i should let the summer months ride out let spring exist spring seems like such a subtle season because it it just is this weird intermediate from winter to summer yeah sometimes i feel like spring doesn't exist sometimes i feel like it doesn't happen the uh pandemic started in spring Mm -hmm. which is really interesting um spring break started in the pandemic and it was like a lot of the uh romantic parts that I enjoyed during this year were in spring, Mm -hmm. you know, romanticized them heavily. So I don't know. I just, uh, I'm happy that the season, the weather specifically, the temperatures have been changing these past few days. Me too. I've been sleeping so good. There's, there's one thing that I will say, uh, when the time changes in the fall yeah. winter i sleep amazing <laughs> That's so good. good it is my favorite kind of sleep i wonder why i don't know maybe the cold helps yeah definitely helps. i mean it's impossible I think that's to sleep when you're of, sweating yeah i think that's part of like where my anxiety in summertime comes from because i hate being hot yeah and i just get really Cause like when you're having, if you have panic attacks, like at least for me, I'll, I'll get really hot and feel like I have like a fever and I'm sweating and like, I need a fan on me. Mm -hmm. And so just feeling that everywhere you go, (laughs) it's like suffocating. So that's why. And it is so much nicer to be cozy and warm than sweaty and warm. Exactly. That's why being cold is so much better than being hot because it's so much easier to get warm than it is to cool off once you're hot. Yeah. Or like here, like remember that one fucking miserable day Mm -hmm. where it was so goddamn hot in here that we had to just drive around at night (laughs) and even when we got back, it was still like Uh, barely under 80 degrees and it definitely was over 80 degrees in our house because we live on the very top floor. Mm -hmm. That I hate that. Like the fact that I'm not, I can't even get comfortable within my own space drives me crazy. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, maybe it would feel differently if I had an air conditioning, but I don't. What what do you th- what like what is a distinct memory that October brings you? When you go, "Oh, it's October." Ugh. What do you think what like memory co- cuz when I, uh, the number one for me uh-huh. is watching horror movies at home on AMC or watching Bravo's 100 movie uh, the 100 scariest movie moments and just Cute. being immersed in the weather changing it's darker mm-hmm. everything there's halloween decorations 
all up and down the neighborhood uh, i have to think about what costume i'm gonna yeah. get like if you if we go to the video store which was a ritual like every single week as a family like we'd always go i knew it was like oh which horror movies are we gonna get on halloween which movies are we gonna get it's like such a distinct like sitting in front of the tv and the most vibrant one was uh, the first year The Walking Dead came out because it was the year oh, wow. I moved. So it was the last year that I had at that my childhood home I grew up in. Mm-hmm. Um, and got to experience this. And I was the oldest, so I had the most, uh, you know, like presence of mm-hmm. mind to experience it. So I always think about that. And that's why I always think, like, I feel like if I'm not watching enough horror movies or enough scary movies, enough Halloween movies, that I'm uh, really robbing myself of good feelings. Yeah. What about you? Um, For me, it makes me think of... Definitely, I mean, I didn't really watch horror movies, but Halloween That's Town. Okay. That, that, all the that, Halloween, Halloween Town. Halloween movie. It's great. I know. I said horror movies. I know. Hocus Pocus, because I used to have to watch Hocus Pocus. <laughs> when I lived in Tennessee, in the first house we lived in, we had a playroom. Mm-hmm. They don't really have those here. They're more popular in the South because houses aren't as expensive, so you can bu- afford to have There's one with extra room. rooms. Yeah, you afford it. <laughs> um, yeah, but I had a playroom and it had a couch and a TV, mm-hmm. so I could sit down on the couch and and watch TV. But when I watched Hocus Pocus, it would scare me so bad cool. that I would bring like a chair in so I could sit. Because I felt like I could get out of the chair and run yeah. out of the room faster than That's I could get off funny. the couch. It doesn't really make any sense. I would also sit closer to the TV for some reason because I think I, I liked the little bit of fear that it brought me. And yeah. then and then running out yeah. <laughs> when I was too scared. So I think <laughs> about that. And then um, when we lived in Tennessee as well. We used to go to my my mom's really big big football fan. Yeah. Oh, nice. So we used to go to the um, high school football games there, wow. like every fr- yeah. Friday, because my brother th- went to high school. Yeah, this is when uh, they have the big rivalry game in Lompoc and Cabrillo. Oh, nice. I, I that's I get that feeling too. Yeah. That's funny. So it was just like the feeling of. Like we'd usually have like some DiGiorno pizza before mm-hmm. we'd leave. And then Amen. like I'd plan out with my friends, like who was going to be there and we'd all meet under the bleachers and just like fuck around. Um, but just, yeah, that feeling was always really exciting. And then um, I just remember one, I don't even, I don't remember the what I was that Halloween but there was one year where I lived in the second house Mm -hmm. the one that we visited yeah and I loved that cul-de-sac because it was full of kids and everyone was just really um friendly there yeah everyone was friends and like before Halloween like right when it was getting or it was Halloween day but it was like just getting dark outside Mm -hmm. and me and all the like kids in the cul-de-sac were just like playing we used to play um four square all the time yeah because there was one house that was empty so we'd go in the driveway and play four square nice and we were playing and then it started to get dark so we all like collectively went into our houses and got our costumes and got ready and everything and i just remember having that same like i don't know like that feel like that excitement excitement you get as a kid and like the coziness of it being cold outside and um, there's a celebration coming and you it's a communal feeling yeah it's and then beautiful another thing was it's that same place my it like was right next to my elementary school so mm-hmm. there was a trail from the neighborhood mm-hmm. you could walk through to get to the elementary school and there was like a fall celebration at the school and I just remember like my family and I honestly actually my grandparents might have been visiting and came to I don't remember but we all walked and it was really fun and just there was like little like carnival games and stuff that the school put on that was really exciting 
I just remember the. It's just like there's this cozy like giddiness mm-hmm. about it that I just. It feels like my whole like the whole house is alive. Yeah. With like something. It feels like. I knew that I was gonna miss that feeling one day. Damn. Ouch. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Yeah. I feel like the more I look back on moments in my childhood, the more I remember like a feeling and yeah. almost as if I knew before I could that I would like that this was going to be a feeling or memory that was going to stick with me forever or as I grew up. Yeah. I feel like I could go back to that memory mm-hmm. tomorrow yeah, and relive it and it, it would feel the exact same. Yeah. Because it was so uh, explicit. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. But I now I feel like I'm just constantly like trying to chase that feeling. Chase the dragon. It's like a junky high of that. Yeah. Well, it's not to say that there isn't other ways to find new different celebrations i have entirely different feelings of celebration around this time when i consider the rocky horror picture shows type of thing yeah, which that's true. i'm kind of over but oh, they I'm still not. I they still be... put such a uh like a seasonal like spirit yeah in me. to me that's like the one thing left <laughs> that gives yeah. me that feeling like i just I don't know. It's fun. You know specifically how you can dress or who mm-hmm. to dress up as. Mm-hmm. I always have fun when we do it together. Yeah. Especially the last one we went to yeah. where you also dressed up as a woman. Like that was so much fun that to was. me. And I yeah, I really liked it. I liked everyone the people that put it on were it was really great. They did such a good job. Like even when yeah. they had technical errors, remember they really killed mm-hmm. it. And it was exciting. Cause like you and I were really the only ones who had seen it before. So we were like the only ones that, that w- were that in we our were, group. Yeah. yeah our group, that we were yeah. with. So it was fun. Got to, our, it was our time to shine. Yeah. We were like the new ones or that not, or that we were like the uh, seasoned ones. Yeah, exactly. It's funny. Yeah. That was really. The veteran Transylvanians. <laughs> yeah. So that that still does give me that feeling, but I don't know. I think I'm just nostalgic for all of that kind of stuff because this year just feels so different. Yeah. Obvious, it is so different. <laughs> it doesn't just feel. It is so different. Significantly different. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, people are crazy if they think people aren't going to celebrate this Halloween because it is on a Saturday after Mm -hmm. this entire year of this shit people are gonna and it's I was saying like this is one holiday like an occasion where you're expected to wear a mask (laughs) yeah the the, I mean people the pandemic hasn't stopped a lot of people from celebrating anything so I don't really think it matters yeah fair enough if you're gonna sell are you gonna fart Dallas please don't why I just get fart blocked. This is what it's like being in a relationship. Someone can control we your body. We were just having like a conversation where I was like mid gonna cry really? because we were talking about like childhood feelings, and then you put the microphone down to your fucking asshole. No, I didn't. Yes, you. I, I just waited until you. I waited until much after the childhood stuff. We were talking about Rocky Horror then. Okay, whatever. Don't worry, it crawled back up and died. Oh, good. Like my Halloween spirit. Do you hear that? Someone fucking next door or what? Um. I hope not. You hope not? Why? Because I, I assume. It's them? That's like their kitchen. No. It, right? We'll think about how our oh, house is right. laid up. And then um, maybe. I mean, maybe. good for them. Good for them. What would you be for Halloween if you could be something for Halloween? This year? I didn't even put any... That's the thing is I didn't even... But what about like an unfulfilled idea you've had? Hmm. I 
I've always sorry that was a long pause. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to be Juno. I told you that yeah. recently. I thought it because that was one of my favorite movies. And yeah, I thought it would be fun, but you wouldn't make a very good Polly Bleaker. No, I would not. So I am neither tall nor skinny. Mm-hmm. You are tall. Well, I'm neither scrawny nor d- dorky. That's true. Uh, yeah, Juno. I guess I don't know. That's not very. It's it's all I got right now. Do you think most people would just be like, "Oh, she's pregnant"? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's such it's just a person <laughs> that's pregnant. Like it's such a yeah a niche costume. Like I, I mean, not ha- really. Have I feel to like hope everyone saw that indie movie. But I think they did. That's like one of if I don't even think you could consider Juno an indie movie anymore. I, I don't know if you could or couldn't, but it, it is. It did come out. You know, 13 years ago. Honestly, if you look on Pinterest, it's a very popular costume. But I, I mean, especially a couple's costume. Really? I, I, I feel like if I... If it was a couple's costume, it would make a lot of sense. There'd be context. More, yeah. more context. It would just be me in the striped shirt and holding a bottle of Sunny D. And That'd be good. With See? jeans and a skirt over it. That's funny. Yeah. That'd be good. What about you? Um, I have a list. I know you do. I, I keep a list. And m- many people don't know this about me, but um, it's because they're not in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer it that way. I have a list of Halloween costumes that I keep all year round because how often do you just like in the middle of February, like, oh, fuck, that would have made a great Halloween costume. Yeah, but you're always like, after Halloween. You know what I mean? Or what about the day after Halloween? especially when you see everyone posting pictures from the night before yeah. and you see all those costumes, you go, Fuck, I could have been a fucking dragon or, you know, who knows what, yeah. but it, 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 it always like, I write them down and I have a bunch. Yeah. Um, I've been house before. That yeah, was a that fun was costume. Such a good costume. I really liked that one. Cause I got to, uh, put some gray in my hair Mm -hmm. act like an asshole it was easy to put the costume together because it was literally a a, like a suit blazer with like a a button-up shirt jeans and some like running shoes and a cane easy peasy titty squeezy okay (laughs) and everyone loved it everyone loved it it was great and then there was this one i don't remember who this fucking lady was but she was like oh my god you're just like him and it just was like an even better excuse to just be a uh dry humorless asshole to her Mm -hmm. (laughs) she was being awful too she deserved it if it for context who was she i have no memory call her out i don't even know that you guys knew who she was anyways um i'd love to be the riddler from batman Cool. Whether it be like a Jim Carrey Riddler or just like a classic kind of Riddler. And they always have Riddler costumes at Halloween stores. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, it would be cool to be Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. I was going to say that. I think you need to do that for sure one year. I would love to. It, it, you know, And I know it's been done and it's a popular one, especially because of memes have made that fucking movie come back to life so mm-hmm. much. Um, you could be the, when he's wearing the raincoat or you could just be wearing a suit with a blood smear on the face. Um, I can't be naked running around with a chainsaw though. I don't have that kind of body, but <laughs> you know, I'd love to be, uh, Billy but- Butcherson from fucking Hocus Pocus. Yeah. Shout out to Doug Jones. Hey, um, Doug Jones. Hope you're listening. Uh, <laughs> he might be. Who knows? That would be cool. That would be pretty cool. Are you cool. listening? Mm, I don't know. I'd love to be a dead Elvis. Hey, we like loved, a, we loved shape, shape of Water. Shape of Water was great. We went and saw it in theaters. It that's was amazing. Right. Yep. Made okay. me a little love you, randy. Doug. Nope. Don't say that. <laughs> um, I'd love to be like a dead Elvis. That would be cool. Like a zombie Elvis. <gasps> what? We could be Elvis and Priscilla, but like dead. I know she's not dead, but too bad. She's not? No, that's good. But we could be like zombie versions of them. That would be that'd cool. be pretty cool. Um, I'd love to be Willy Wonka. That would be funny. Um, Salvador Dali would be great. Love it. I'd be Salvador Dali. <laughs> um, Edgar Allan Poe. Cool. It's another one. Um, I I I don't know if you've ever seen this movie. It's an old movie. Uh, 
the Warriors. No. Um, there's, it's about a bunch all the gangs in New York City go oh, after this this it. one gang because they think that uh, they killed this like big gang leader. Mm-hmm. And one of the fucking gangs are called the Baseball Furies, and they're like in baseball uniforms and they have this like crazy face paint and it just looks really cool. Always like that. Nice. So that'd be cool. Um, mm-hmm. I just watched this movie either this year or last year, but it was amazing. It was as good as everyone says it is. Mm-hmm. It's a Chinatown mm-hmm. came out in the late seventies, early eighties, I think, uh, with Jack Nicholson. Cool. His character gets his n- nose cut open at one point, and he has to wear a bandage over it. So it's like a suit with a nose over his bandage and he has the old a like, nose over his bandage oh i'm sorry a bandage <laughs> over his nose and uh <laughs> i wonder how many fucking times those things just go by like unnoticed <laughs> um unnoticed <sighs> so that'd be cool that would be cool. that's a really like easy one to spot yeah. for anyone who's seen the movie is it a popular movie yeah i mean i don't know how many people like ah, like we know that might be she tickled me it was horrible it was embarrassing anyway <laughs> that's my getting tickled noise it's like her fucking long fingernails are like spider legs crawling on it it's terrifying um yeah and it'd be cool like to be the punisher yeah um yeah all kinds of Maybe things. Maybe I need to start a list so I can have a better answer than Juno. I mean, I'm sure you would. Like, I know I, I was, have I ideas. A, they're, I just, they're not coming to the surface right well, now. Lady, if I was a lady, um, I bet it would open up some like ideas. Mm-hmm. Maybe the girl with the dragon tattoo. That'd no. be cool. If I was a lady, not, not you. I'm not, I'm not saying for you. If oh, yeah. Me. Jeez. I mean, you could still do it. That'd be kind of um, cool. Maybe one of the girls from Ghost World. Yeah. See, I, I have wanted. Didn't I think I was really close to doing that last year? The year that I think I was Velma, I feel like I was like oh, just about to. But here's the thing: is still have those uh, photos, folks. <laughs> that's a pretty obscure one, and I don't think anyone would get it. And for almost all of my life, I've only been obscure uh <laughs> characters like when i was a kid i all like every halloween almost dressed up as priscilla presley that's so funny. <laughs> just priscilla presley did not but have an what elvis makes you cool and special and unique and it's there's nothing wrong with that no i didn't say there was well, you were saying it like it was a like a. Drop, I just mean like that's a, not as fun to have to go around all Halloween and explain what you. You need are. like a like a disclaimer card, yeah. like here's your answer. Yeah, but I would love to like have a Halloween party where you're just an obscure like movie character of some I, sort. That would yeah, be really fun. That would be really cool. One day when we have our own place where we can be loud. Oh, I know. Which is funny because I don't like being loud and being obnoxious, but I don't like not having the option to either. Yeah. For those of you who don't really pay too close attention, podcast hasn't been too loud since I moved here, has it? Not a lot of outbursts, not a lot of crazy shit going on. I mean, I think that we're possibly being a little too careful or more it's, careful it, than we need to it be. is possible but i do like setting a precedent of like i don't want to be obnoxious every fucking chance i get yeah type of thing yeah, that's fair um we gotta have a halloween movie night at some point yeah which halloween you want to watch one the first one and two i want i want to show you number three season okay. of the witch so badly then let's do that. We'll do that. We have to. I really have been wanting to watch um, It. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm so in. I love how, first of all, the f- first movie experience was kind of ruined for us by those kids yeah. in the yeah, movie I theater. Yeah, I really want to rewatch that one. And then Is the it on second anything? one. Uh, I'll buy it. 
We'll go wow. out and buy it. Like seriously, like we can go to Walmart after this. Go buy it. Go get some Taco he Bell. He winked at me. I oh did. my God, guys. Do you hear our glamorous state? We're yeah. going to get Taco Bell and then we're going to go to Walmart. That is classy. And that's the luxurious like life of living in San Diego, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Literally nothing has changed. We could just be living with our parents and save a lot of money and still go to Taco Bell and Walmart. Yeah, but then we couldn't rub it in other people's faces that we live on our own. <laughs> and we true. and we get to have a shared room now. What were you going to say? That's exactly what I was going to uh, say. Yep. And we have to share the rest of the place we live in. Mm-hmm. It's a lot like we still live with our parents. Just <laughs> our roommate can't really tell us what to do or guilt trip us. Mm-hmm. We just pay for it now. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. I and I, I want to watch the second one again. I feel like didn't people didn't like the second one, but I liked it. Oh, I loved the second one. Yeah, it I was loved so it. fucking good. And both of those movies were scary. Like, I felt like in my life. I thought the second one was so much scarier. Yeah, it was gnarly. Yeah. And then I actually was, uh, that's interesting you say that because the beginning of the pandemic and Mm -hmm. like like one of my favorite parts was listening to the It audiobook on my bike rides. Oh, yeah, I remember you did that. I used to do that a lot and then it just kind of stopped. Oh, you didn't finish it? It's um, like a week-long book. (laughs) I don't even know how, it's like a 80 hours or something. I don't know. Mm. I have no idea how long it is. Me either. But sometimes I'm like, I got to listen to podcasts and my family and friends voices at some point. And I used to only listen to it on a bike ride and the bike ride would last like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. So maybe be gone now. So you have a lot left is what you're talking about. A lot more bicycle riding to do. Oh. Yeah. Well... Thank you for being a guest on my podcast. Thanks for having me. I feel like I was a little low energy. I apologize. Really? Uh, I don't think it matters because if yeah, begin, this Fuck is just you. this is just the brand of the episode right now. I'm really not worried about it. Low energy. No etiquette. <laughs> Fuck off. What? It's not low energy. You're doing huh. fine. Thanks. And if someone doesn't want to listen, they're not gonna. So I'm not worried about it, folks. Signing off. This well, has we been, gotta go to Taco Bell. We gotta go to Taco and Walmart. Bell and Walmart and watch it. And watch it. 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 Uh, Any last words? Uh, love you guys. Ugh. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you, everyone. This is the Bad Etiquette Podcast. Where the fuck are you? Bad 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 Bad